Hello and welcome to the seventh episode of season two of BTW Bellaby Talks Wellness Podcast. Today we'll be talking about MTHFR genetic mutation and its effects on women's health, the issues it causes and preventive measures we should all be aware of with today's guest, Dr. Ricardo Miranda. I must admit that this topic is something completely new to me, even though I was just recently pregnant. And when I talked to a couple of my friends that recently had children, they weren't aware of MTHFR genetic mutation and its related pregnancy uh, issues either. Um, this is a genetic mutation that in pregnancy can cause neural tube defects, recurring pregnancy loss, congenital abnormalities, and more. And it's also linked to other health issues important to women, such as anxiety, obesity, thyroid pro problems. So I guess this is something that all women should be aware of, but especially something that we should be aware of if we are pregnant, if we're planning to be, be pregnant, and even though if we already had children in the past. But before we dive deeper into the topic with our guest, I wanted to introduce myself. Uh, hi, my name is Urka. I'm the co-founder of Bellaby, the company behind BTW podcast. We are dedicated to opening topics and exploring topics relevant to the, the health of women. And we hope that we are bringing some really relevant information and innovation as well in the space of femtech and the health of women. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our amazing guest, Dr. Ricardo Miranda. Dr. Ricardo Miranda is the CEO of MTHFRDoctors.com, one of the leading websites in the field with the biggest research database and related studies available. He is a clinician and one of the top researchers in the field of MTHFR genetic mutation. With over 28 years of clinical expertise, he is able to assess the direct link between MTHFR genetic mutations and health issues. So, Dr. Ricardo, could you please tell us about yourself a little bit about your expertise um, and the field of interest, how you got into it, what you what you guys are doing, what M, uh, what MTHFR genetic mutation stands for, what it, why is it relevant to our audience, who is mostly women. Sure, sure. My pleasure. And thanks for having me on the, on your show. Um, so my original training is in Chinese medicine. And I have uh, been practicing for almost 30 years. And in the past 10 years, I got involved in functional medicine and researching about epigenetics uh, because I have a special interest in longevity. And I have found out that our DNA is not our destiny. And we can actually control the outcome of expression of our genes. And I, I found that very interesting and I started researching about it. And I, I wanted to learn how I can control my own destiny in, in my health and my patients. And during my research, I found out that the process of methylation, which is a biochemical process that controls gene expression, that's how it controls, how we, how it turns genes on and off. And that's how we control uh, our, the expression of our genes. So I wanted to find out how do I control methylation then? So I started researching and that's when I encountered MTHFR. MTHFR stands for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase. It's a gene that controls how our body breaks down folate or folic acid. And folate is the main fuel, the main nutrient for that process of methylation. So we need folate. And, and a lot of people use the, the, the word folic acid, which I'll explain the difference in a, in a second. Uh, so we need folate or folic acid for methylation to function. And methylation, in addition to controlling gene expression, uh, for example, if you have genes in your family, uh, diabetes or heart 
disease or mental illness or most cancers. Um, all these genes, all these uh, conditions, they are controlled by multiple genes, actually. And we can control the expression of those genes. Uh, 40 years ago, we used to think that just because you have that condition in your family, that you're going to express and you're going to get that disease. But what we have found out now that we can control that and we can uh, suppress right. expression. And that's by the process of methylation. And therefore, we need... Uh, folate. Now, the MTHFR mm -hmm. gene, um, there are some mutations that may occur. As a matter of fact, 80% mm -hmm. of the population have some mutation in MTHFR. So you may lose from 20% up to 70% of your ability to break down folate or folic acid. So on okay. worst case, like about 20% of the population, they have the worst mutation. Uh, so you lose 70% of your ability to break down folic acid. Now, for uh, um, women, for example, which uh, one of the most known uh, um, um, causes or not causes, uh, um, factors that women take folate and folic acid is during pregnancy mm -hmm. uh, to avoid birth defects. Um, so what in the early 90s, what uh, the... The scientist uh, discovers that uh, deficiency in folate will cause birth defects. And mm -hmm. then they start manufacturing in the lab folic acid. Folic acid is synthetic, which is the cheapest form to make and is stable. So they can mm -hmm. uh, infuse in, in foods and also prescribe multivitamins containing folic acid to prevent birth defects, which it does. Mm -hmm. uh, but mm -hmm. they were not factoring in MTHFR mutations. So for those women that have mutations on the gene that breaks down the folic acid, mm -hmm. they will not be able to break it down efficiently. And then not only they are only going to absorb a portion of it, if they have the worst mutation, they, they're only going to absorb 30%. So they're not okay. getting fully protected. But even more important, uh, what the unmetabolized folic acid becomes toxicity. Okay. And then, then their body needs to detoxify. So, um, so th th that's probably one of the most important um, factors on on the on the usage of MT on folate and folic acid, which has to do with uh, MTHFR in women. Right, because I I was intrigued by this topic because I was just recently pregnant. I'm I have a, a seventh month old, um, and I must admit I've never heard of MTHFR genetic mutation before. I was never you know told about it by my um, you know practitioners or my my uh, OB uh, GYN, um, but I have heard about obviously about folic acid. I was prescribed uh, supplements containing folic acid um mm -hmm. when i looked into it more there is a difference between folic acid and folinic acid obviously and you know how one you have to metabolize the other one you don't have to but i wasn't even sure what my supplements um contained at the end of the day um and yeah. i was never kind of aware of having the possibility of having have this having had this uh genetic mutation and how it could affect my absorption or met, uh, metabol my meta met met metabolizing this, um, you know, folate um, or yes. uh, consequentially building up toxicity in my body and how it could affect, uh, you know, Absolutely. additionally yeah. affect the health of my baby. Um, so how, how come? Yeah, this is still um, a new uh, subject. They, they mm -hmm. um, it seems like they're very, you know, the, the medical... Um, field is very slow on new science. It takes mm -hmm. them a long time. They need to look through over years of research to start implementing it. I mean, it goes back right. to 30 years ago when I started practicing Chinese medicine that mm -hmm. um, even though acupuncture is so effective in increased uh, fertility, for example, we all know now, mm -hmm. but 30 years ago, most doctors didn't know. 
and they are not aware of how efficient, how good acupuncture can be on fertility. So back in the days, I remember I had to explain so much to the doctors but over the years as research starts piling up and coming in with good data that acupuncture improves fertility. Now it took about, you know, only in the past 15 years that I start seeing, you know, a big change. And nowadays, most fertility clinics recommend acupuncture because they know all the research, but we knew 30 years ago, but they're very mm -hmm. slow. So same thing with MTHFR. Uh, there are a lot of research already coming uh, uh, to the surface on PubMed, on, but the medical community is still very slow in looking into that and, and, and implementing it. So unfortunately, they, it takes them a long time, uh, but, it, you know, we should not wait because especially on with pregnancy and the health of the baby is very important. Uh, you only you don't have ten years. It's nine months right. you got, so you need to do the right decision now. You don't you can't wait ten years for for them to catch up. Right, but so what you're saying is that um, kind of testing to MPHFR is not just possible, but it should be uh, practiced more and more because I think right now the practice is they only start looking into this mutation or issues after you've already had complications after you've already had pregnancy losses or previous yeah. uh neural tube defects um and, yes. and so forth yes unfortunately okay. that's how it's done right now only when you have complications and then they start looking right. at, but this really should be looked at you know if you're gonna if you're planning to get pregnant you already should get tested. You should get mm -hmm. tested. Your partner should get tested. And then you should know what are the possible outcome, outcomes uh, of, of the baby. You should supplement correctly. And then depending mm -hmm. on the mutation you have, there might be different doses. You can get a little bit more complex. Um, okay. But... Um, you sh if you do not have any mutation, only 20% of the population don't have any mutation, and then you're able okay. to break down folate, folic acid, all types, no problem. But this is only 20%. Now, if you if you have a mutation, and then you should not take any form of folic acid. You should only okay. take folate from natural sources, from food, or methylated folate. And folinic mm -hmm. acid is also fine so it's a little different okay okay mm -hmm. um and then the dosage it has to do to really get into what is the correct dosage for you uh you need to look at what type of mutation you have and do the prop the, the blood work measure folate calculate and then it becomes complex you should have um you know a, a doctor that understands mthfr to help you with dosage but mm -hmm. as far as safety, um, a methylated folate is a better option than okay. folic acid, even if you don't have a mutation. So just on be, to be on the safe side. Yes, because they both work the same, and methylated folate works just as well, if not better, in raising folate levels in your blood. So I really mm -hmm. don't see the reason why they don't mm -hmm. just replace across the board folic acid right. by methylated folate. It should be just right. replaced. Now you can fine tune the dosage according to the patient's mutation, but at least uh -huh. the minimum dosage should be given as a methylated folate and not folic acid. Okay. That that's that's my goal is to change uh, this concept in the uh, medical uh, community. So basically, that's not just changing um, um, principles of medical community, but also pharmaceuticals, right? Because the supplements are created by the pharmaceutical industry. And I guess there's a standard out there right now. I mean, in my experience being pregnant recently here in Europe, there's very few uh, prenatal supplements that are that are on the market that have been approved uh, by um, EU regulators for the EU market. So I guess the options are already very limited. So what is in there 
it's kind of regulated by the pharmaceutical industry, right? Um, yeah, that's some, and unfortunately, they don't make much money on this because a lot of companies can make methylated folate. Here in the United States, is available. There are maybe hundreds of companies that, that make methylated folate. You can go to any health food store and get it. So the pharma, mm -hmm. there's no money for the pharmaceuticals. So they they don't care about this issue. There's no money for them. I, I'm not sure how how easy or how hard it is in Europe to uh, or other parts of the world to get uh, methylated folate on you know mm -hmm. on, on health food stores or supermarket. I, I I don't know how easy it is, um, but I I would think that. It shouldn't be that hard to find uh, the supplements. Um, although folic right. acid is the cheapest kind to put on on, on prenatal vitamins, for example. Uh, so that's usually what they use, but it's not the best kind. Okay, so it also comes down to basically having information because I was I just wasn't aware. I wasn't made aware of the difference between. All these options i wasn't aware that there is anything else uh but folic acid um maybe i have been also taking you know uh methylated uh folate but i just wasn't aware that there is something that is different that is that doesn't need to be metabolized by my body yes and 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 that's why i i like to have these conversations and bring awareness so that a lot of people out there just like yourself they have no idea they're just taking it and they maybe they yeah. read folate or folic acid and it's not even re, not even registering. They but now as we're explaining, they should be able to go and look at the label and see, oh, folic acid. Maybe that's not safe for right. me. Maybe look mm -hmm. for either folate from natural sources, they will label that, mm -hmm. which is from food, which is fine. Or uh methylated folate. Now I have to make one differentiation. Folate from natural sources is safe. But your body mm -hmm. still needs to break that down. Now, okay. if you have a mutation, you're still not going to absorb everything. So okay. let's say you, you have the worst mutation, and then you only absorb 30%. So the 70% mm -hmm. that you don't absorb, if it's from natural sources, it just gets eliminated from your body. That's no problem. Okay? Mm -hmm. But you have the mutation, and then you need the methylated form not even the natural source because and then the methylated form it bypasses the mutation so you it's already broken down so your body will absorb a hundred percent then you have the full protection okay understood and can we just go briefly through what type of mutations are there or what levels of mutation uh we can have and how that affects our ability to absorb folate yes you were talking about percentages Yes, so there are two main alleles, we say, of MTHFR, the, the two most important ones. MTHFR C677T and MTHFR A1298C. So there are two types. Those are the most important. Mutations, you can have the, the mildest mutations is one mutation on MTHFR A1298C. You lose roughly 20% of your ability to break down the folate. And then the next level is either a one mutation, which the, the, the medical term, the correct term is a heterozygous mutation. Uh, mm -hmm. So we just say in simple terms, is the one mutation of the MTHFR C677T, which you, you would lose 40% of your ability to break down. Or two mutations of the other allele, the MTHFR A1298C. That also you lose about 40%. So that's the next level. And then the worst mutations, you have one that is a one mutation on each kind. So you have one mutation on the MTHFR C677T and one mutation on MTHFR A1298C. We call it the compound heterozygous because you've got one and one you lose roughly 60% of your ability to break down folate and folic acid. And that also cause, may cause a lot of, uh, of issues health-wise, okay? And the worst mutation after that is a double mutation on the 
MTHFR C677 that you lose roughly 70% of your ability to break down folate and folic acid. So most of it okay. is very okay. significant. That's the worst okay. mutation. These are the levels. Okay, so I guess we're talking about significant influence on um, on our ability to process folate and therefore um, our body's methylation process. Um, and you were talking about how methylation process is, is important for genetic expression. So mm -hmm. we're talking about um, other issues that are not just related to pregnancy outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. So what kind of other health implications are we talking about here? So for example, another function of methylation is detoxification. It controls how our body detoxify. Okay. So if, if you have a mutation uh, and you're able to, de to detoxify and we live in a toxic world, so, we need, so it can uh, affect a, a lot of uh, 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 issues in our health, skin conditions and gut issues and, and uh, other, other, another very common uh, health issue on affecting, affected by MTH fermentation is mental health, anxiety okay. and depression. Uh, that is directly related uh, to the mutation. Um, and then it also depends on how the body is working, um, how healthy the person is. Uh, because methylation affects every aspect in our health. Now, if you have issues with headaches, for example, with migraine headaches, and if you have a mutation, that's going to be worse. The, uh, there are so many health conditions directly related to migraine headaches, for example. Um, and any type of health issue, you, we need to have that process called methylation working. And we need to have a detox in our body work. Okay, when we're, sorry, if I can just jump in when we're talking about detox, because in the wellness industry, detox is kind of like an umbrella term to that covers from eating just smoothies to, you know, uh, you know, absorbing sunlight and so forth. So, medically, what what that really means? What is that term? Detoxification. So, what are we detoxifying from? Got it. Got it. So, um, the methylation controls intracellular detoxification. So, mm -hmm. all toxins that get into our body the body puts in a space outside of the cell that is called extracellular matrix. And then mm -hmm. everything is circulated in there and there's a film that protects and then the body activates through a liver enzyme uh, to start fighting at, uh, 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 or getting rid of the toxins that are on this space. Okay, And then we detoxify and get this out. Mm -hmm. Methylation controls this whole process. So uh, whenever, whenever we eat uh, GMOs, whenever we, uh, uh, there's toxicity in our food, they spray uh, pesticides on the fields and we mm -hmm. eat that. Our body needs to detoxify. So there are so many mm -hmm. types of, uh, of toxins that get in our system on a daily basis and our body is normally detoxifying. And mm -hmm. methylation controls this intracellular detoxification mechanism. So when you mm -hmm. have imitation of the gene, that will directly reduce our ability to detoxify. And then you're not, mm -hmm. and then you keep accumulating toxicity, accumulating toxicity, and then it also depends on how you know how everything else in your body works. So sometimes one person that has a, lo a lot of gut issues will even have mm -hmm. a worse problem than other person that is healthier. You know, mm -hmm. because and then they're able to to maintain a little more. Um, but it it will inevitably, if you have a mutation, we, it will affect our ability to detoxify. So we need to make sure that that process is working well. Now, at the same time, we also have to try uh, to live a, a healthy lifestyle. Right. Right. So it feels like it would be naturally uh, natural to also assume that there is any that there are some correlations with the women's natural cycle um, and our ability to have regular uh, cycles when we're Micro talking about yeah. our ability to detoxify and 
uh, met uh, our exactly. body's ability to. Yeah. And and this is how MTHFR is related to the cycle, is through the detoxification, okay. because mm -hmm. uh, if you're not detoxing, especially heavy metals accumulate, and that may affect mm -hmm. the hormones and that may affect the cycles. So it's an it's an indirect connection to the cycles through the detoxification. Mm -hmm. That's a great example. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, so basically, uh, us knowing whether the, we have this gene mutation would be important, even if we're not, you know, just planning uh, children or have uh, any other symptoms that are that you have uh, mentioned, such, such as anxiety, headaches, and so forth. It could be Absolutely. tied to issues that we have our with our natural cycle. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Because if you know you have the mutation, you know you have a, a weakness on that ability to detoxify. And then okay. you can help. On a lesser right. level of importance, for example, uh, the body engulfs toxins in fat cells to protect us from toxins. So people mm -hmm. with this mutation, if you're not detoxing well, it's harder to lose weight. Because okay. your body is con constantly engulfing toxins in fat cells, and you're you're not able to get rid of the toxins. Now, as you well. handle the mutation and you supplement, and then your methylation is working well, your detox is working well, you have less toxins. It will be, and then mm -hmm. your body is not engulfing toxins in fat cells. It will be easier to lose weight. Okay, interesting. So it feels like this kind of mutation, this mutation specifically is very important for our overall overall health and it could be masked under a variety of different symptoms that we are, you know, most of us are suffering from. So how accessible yeah. is now testing or, um, you know, how can we, we, we get, te get to be tested and what can we do then with those results? Yes, absolutely. So uh, that's part of the reason that we created um, the website, mthfrdoctors.com, so not only to give information and articles. So we have home test kits that we can we okay. can actually ship all over the world. And for international shipping, it's free shipping we have. So, all, so people can order from all over the world uh, the test kits. They don't need doctor prescription. And it's a simple cheek swab. Mm -hmm. And then they send it back to us. We'll process and place the results on their portal on our website so they can bring the results to their doctor and it stays there. We save it. You, and you only need to do this test once in your lifetime because your DNA mm -hmm. is it's not going to change. doesn't change. <laughs> yeah. That so, much. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, uh, it's, it's really a test that everyone should do. And... Uh, you only do it once in your lifetime and it's there and you can use that information uh, to help, you know, throughout your life as you're going through different uh, uh, situations, whether you're planning to get pregnant or you just want to uh, be healthier. It's a very okay. important information. Um, and it, since you've, or, you've also mentioned that I mean, we talked about how this uh, genetic mutation influences our body's ability to, um, our body's methylation process, and mm -hmm. methylation process is important for um, gene expression, what we, what, what we talked about. I think a lot of people now are into exploring our, um, you know, genome and what, what, what genes we have for different diseases, different, um, you know, or predisp predispositions that we have for different uh, disease diseases. So this is something that we could additionally look into because it might be a solution uh, for you know a, a certain gene um, uh, expressing itself or not, right? Yes, actually, I I believe that uh, the MTHFR gene to be the most important of all, all the genes because it controls the expression of all the genes through methylation. So yes, you have, uh, and most diseases are controlled by multiple genes, except for a few, uh, sickle cell anemia, if you have that one gene, or for example, the breast cancer, the BRCA genes, you know, okay. for the breast, okay, there's some BRCA, if you have that gene, and then it's like 80% of developing breast cancer, we 
can't change it. But most most yeah. cancers are actually controlled by multiple genes, which is not okay. one gene. So that methylation can turn it off, can suppress the gene. So for most health conditions, methylation can suppress the expression of the genes. So you okay. need to treat the body, be healthy, and treat methylation and optimize your methylation. Okay, when you say treat your body and be healthy, what does what does that mean? <laughs> that means um, don't just treat your methylation and have a really unhealthy lifestyle. You never exercise. You only eat the worst foods, and you know. So you're doing everything wrong in your life, and methylation alone is not going to save you. You still need, and then you smoke every day. Chain smoke. I mean, if you do everything, I mean, this is. We need to be mindful that we need to take care of our health as well. Then the, the methylation is a part of a, a, our system. Does it make okay. sense? Under yeah, understood. But what would be your kind of like your personal advice to maybe our listeners? Like what kind, what, what would be a healthy lifestyle? Uh, what kind of advice would you have? Uh, for our audience to create healthy lifestyle yeah, that so, you're talking about. Especially if you have mutations, right? So you eat organic food as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and be in an environment that it's uh, less conducive to stress. Avoid stressful people around you that will you know, it will cause more stress in your life. But organic food, I think, is one of the uh, simplest and more general advice that I have. Uh, it, but do not overstress. You go into a restaurant and, mm -hmm. of course, you're not going to have organic food. Don't stress. Mm -hmm. If you optimize your methylation, your body should be able to handle uh, most uh, uh, toxicity in moderation. Mm -hmm. But we want to minimize. I so I don't know um, the level of health or or unhealthiness of uh, the individual listening uh, to this uh, show. So mm -hmm. everyone is different. Uh, the more health issues you have, the more careful you need to be with your lifestyle. And one of the most um, uh, general advice would be. Eat organic food as much as possible uh, and uh, do some type of exercise, uh, which by research has shown exercise, physical exercise, enhances methylation. So this okay. is by shown by um, And the last thing I would say in my, in my list of importance, uh, diet is number three, exercise is number two, but the number one is be happy. Do something that makes you happy. At least once a week, you do that because happiness changes our biochemistry. Okay? So that is so important. If you if there's something that you like to do and you're just not doing it, uh, make the time and then do that one activity, that one thing, because that will really make a, a huge difference. Um, I remember years ago, this one patient I had, she was three-time kidney transplant. And, and that was like years, years ago. And she had a kidney transplant when she was a teenager at UCLA. So long time ago, uh, I started treating her. She was like 40-something already. And she was the longest patient that was leaving that during the time that they did transplants at UCLA, everybody has already died. She was the living, the, the longest living patient that had the kidney transplant. So many surgeries, so many. I mean, her heart rate would go on the same day, 20 beats a minute to 180 beats a minute. And the, oh my goodness, there were so, so many things wrong. But guess what? She was always smiling. She was always smiling and having a great attitude. And the doctors, they could make it, she just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, and everybody. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's very important. Happiness really 
is very important for our longevity. For the power of will, I guess, the will to live as well. Uh, yes, yes. But I think <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, there, there are so many research that's done about, you know, smiling and the chemistry that, that we generate. So I guess this is for overall, not just for the mutation, just an overall <laughs> advice. <Right. laughs> so, awesome. No, no, it's, it's great. So this advice is for anybody that wants to um, support their body's uh, methylation process. But on top of that, I guess it's beneficial if we get tested for the mutation. And then additionally, we can adjust, um, I guess, our dietary or supplementation intake based on the results, right? And that Absolutely. can... Absolutely. That's, that's very important because you can have a mutation, but you only lose 20%. So you just need a little bit of help. But what if you have a mutation right. and you lose most of your ability to process that? You need to know because then you need more right. help. You need to take, yes, uh, right. a larger amount of, of methylated folate. So, yeah, so the most the, the first thing you need to do is you get the acid and then you know what you have. Awesome. And basically that could help you improve the way your genes are expressing, basically have better positive outcomes for your overall health uh, through, through expression of your genes. Yes. Pregnant or not pregnant. Awesome. Pregnant or not pregnant, yes. And uh, another thing, if you're pregnant, for example, there has been a correlation between unmethylated folic acid and autism. Okay, interesting. Could you tell us a bit more about that? Yes. So uh, in the early 90s, uh, the government started prescribing, you know, have this practice to prescribe folic acid to prevent birth defects. Mm -hmm. And along the same time, back in the 1990s, uh, if you look at the Centers for Disease Control, the occurrence rate for autism was 1 in 10,000 babies. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And the occurrence rate for autism now, 2023, is like 1 in 46, 47. It's mm -hmm. crazy. And you can see statistically that since they started supplementing with folic acid, Mm -hmm. Over the years, the occurrence rates occurrence rate for autism have been progressively increasing as well. So a mm -hmm. lot of researchers, not just myself, a lot of researchers on MTHFR, we all agree that the MTHFR mutation is a factor on this, is at, at least one important factor. There are probably multiple factors, but it's one important factor that contributes to the increase for autism. So if you're pregnant, it is crucial that, especially if you have the mutation, that you need to take the methylated folate and not folic acid. That will prevent uh, autism. It will reduce uh, the rate. And, and, and if you're pregnant, you want a healthy baby. So you want to mm -hmm. right. you want to be as healthier as healthy as, as possible. And obviously, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's very important. Um, Extremely important. When it when it comes to autism, it has been tied to so many factors over the last couple of years. Because what what you said is that uh, the rate at which autism is now uh, diagnosed is significantly higher than it was previously. And I've heard a lot of theories. What it might might be is this just one theory, or is it? Um, you know, have you di directly tied it to um, autism through research? Well, it is a theory right now mm -hmm. based on my studies on research. Mm -hmm. So it's still it's still a theory. Mm -hmm. um, and until again, in the medical field, you have to do extensive research, extensive research. It, it's going to take years before right. they say, yes, this is a factor. Right now, it's, you know, a lot of research will say, yes, this, uh, it's a possible cause. We looked at that, that but we need to do more research. Right. And, and they are going, they're doing the research, but why do we want to wait five, 10 years to take action that can make a huge impact? 
because you have to look at the pros and cons. If we make this change, if we if we give the supplements, if we take in consideration MTHFR and change folic acid by folate, what is the pro? If everything looks like it is, we can prevent, we can, we will prevent the birth defect because it works and we can prevent right. like autism and other conditions. So what is the downside? There's no downside. Mm -hmm. So just change no for... Downside, except and maybe the supplement will be a little more expensive. There's no downside. Right. So why don't we make the change now instead of waiting to see, yes, we were right, but how many babies are going to be born that could right. have been helped? So right. if, if there's no downside, let's do the right thing. Let's, let's get tested and let's take the right supplement. Right. I mean, everything that we talked about has been mentioned in correlation to autism in the past, or I've, at least I've heard, you know, toxins, GMOs, you know, and I guess everything kind of is, is intertwined through uh, toxification of the body and, uh, you know, this uh, genetic expression and uh, the mutations. So what you're saying is basically just, you know, if we d did this change to change the folic acid for methylated folate, we could just have, um, you know, the upside instead of uh, have the risk of this being really a significant factor in causing autism in children. Exactly. We'll get the same benefit of preventing birth defect. Plus, we eliminate the risk of more toxicity that can affect to the brain development of the baby that can lead to autism and other conditions. So there's no okay. downside. Understood. Understood. Uh, so I guess the, the solution is quite simple, but how, so if you're trying to raise awareness of that and the solution is so simple, what is kind of the uh, reception of this information in um, uh, the medical circles, the medical professionals who are advising their patients to take uh, supplements? I mean, you've mentioned that there's a problem that they're slow in adapting to new directions that, you know, they might be lacking in, uh, newest information and so forth. But, um, you know, when you explain it, it sounds so simple. It should take, you know, one conference for, you know, all the societies of OBGYNs to start, you know, prescribing this different uh, supplement to their patients. Yes, I understand. When, um, when you talk to doctors on one, one on one, uh, there's really mm -hmm. no resistance. Uh, I would say mm -hmm. over 90 percent of doctors they see it they say yes right away and then they agree and then they prescribe the patient the, this okay mm -hmm. but in order to get into uh like an official statement for the the profession on a conference and they have to get approved by the fda and so Mm -hmm. there, there are different levels in order to get to that point and they need to have so many research and the research say yes but we need more research so that there's so much that goes on a lot of bureaucracy uh mm -hmm. and that it just takes years and takes a lot of time and remember the there's no money to be made and i think a lot of it is that like the pharmaceutical industry has no interest. So everything that they, they, they're looking at everything else, nobody has interest in, in uh, 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 changing uh, folic acid to methylated folate. There might be some other reasons I'm unaware of that as far as cost and, uh, you know, maybe they're, you know, being from Brazil, I understand there's a, 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 there's a lot of corruption that goes into decisions like that, uh, such as maybe companies there are, and I'm not saying that this happens here, but, you know, uh, sometimes decisions are made based on financial rewards, and mm -hmm. that should not be made, uh, because it makes sense. In, 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 if you ask me why are they they're not doing that. I say, you know, I don't have the answers. Like why, you know, it's, I'm, I have the same question. Why, why do, don't the system um, start being more proactive? But, you know, I guess there's a, a you know, a lot of uh, 
bureaucracy in um, in the way, and they have to follow their their you know their protocol. So it might take a while, just like with the acupuncture and fertility. Uh, we knew 30 years ago there worked, but it, it mm-hmm. took them, you know, it, like 15 years, you know, only in the past 10 years or so that I see most fertility clinics, they recommend because now it be, it, it became so overwhelming that everyone, mm-hmm. so I think this will happen with MTHFR, you know, it's going to get to a time that it's going to be so overwhelming. Everyone will know that mm-hmm. everyone, gonna, you know, that this is going to be replaced eventually but i would like yeah. to be soon than later yes all right so i guess the best path to that is now to give the power of information and decision making into the hands of the patients right absolutely yes amazing you, you know yes you got to take take the you know the power in your hands and take control of your own health yes awesome so on that note if we could conclude this discussion just with recommendation for our audience on where they can learn more about this genetic mutation, where they can find uh, testing or, you know, um, purchase um, home tests for this mutation, what they can do then with the results. Um, and, you, you know, what what are the action steps that they should be taking right now? Sure. So they can go to mthfrdoctors.com. And there's a lot of information there. They can purchase their home test kits, uh, as I said, all for international uh, uh, shipping. We even have free shipping for international uh, customers. Uh, if they need uh, help, they, if they don't have a doctor that understands uh, MTGFR and they need an expert, we have wellness coaching sessions that we do through Zoom to patients from all over the world. We can help. Uh, so a lot of resource on mthfrdoctors.com. They can go there and uh, um, and learn about and take actions. Awesome. And basically, this is important not just for women who are trying to get pregnant or are pregnant, but also for our overall health and longevity. So basically, health outcomes throughout our life from now yeah. till the end, I guess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And, and just has our upside, DNA is not going right? to change, so we, have... <laughs> we can just do good with it. Yes, no, absolutely. no downsides to it, and no, no fear, as I understand, because there is solution out there. Even if we do have this mutation, um, we don't yes. have to and be afraid simple. of the results. Yes, exactly. So we don't need to be afraid. Simple solution: you can go to any health food store and get the right supplement. You just need a little guidance as far as dosage. But very simple, yes. That's a good news. Amazing. I mean, a very positive uh, conversation. It's not often like this. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm very happy. And I thank you very much for this discussion. And thank you very much for this, all of this information. I must say that I wasn't aware of this genetic mutation before, even though I was recently pregnant as well. Um, and I'm so happy that I know about it now. And I'm going to definitely get myself test it and see what I can do with this information to better um, other things about my, my health, um, not just you know any possible future pregnancies, but um, also other autoimmune conditions that I have. I, I can see if this might be a solution uh, to improving my conditions. So I'm Absolutely. very much looking forward to it. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Ricardo, and have a great day. You too.